great pictures, great video, and a mix of pro and consumer features, let's have a look at Canon's mirrorless camera, the EOS M. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. You know, mirrorless cameras are a blend of consumer point-and-shoot form factor and features with an upgraded sensor, changeable lenses, and some pro controls. This design has been around a couple of years, and even though Canon wasn't one of the first out of the gate, their first mirrorless camera, the EOS M, makes them a serious competitor. The first thing I noticed about this camera is that there aren't lots of buttons and dials to adjust settings. The design is sleek, small and simple, and the apparent simplicity is probably a good design idea because it keeps the EOS M from being intimidating to novices. But the good news for people like me is that all those controls that you want are still there. You just have to use the touch screen to get to them. I'm already familiar with Canon's DSLR menu system and pretty much everything that you might be used to is right there in the EOS M menus too. By default, the mode is set to creative auto. So a beginner picks up the camera and starts shooting, they're gonna get the best possible results Canon's automated systems can deliver. If you're an enthusiast or a pro and you're looking for more control, you'll be able to find aperture priority, shutter, program, and manual modes pretty quickly. And speaking of easy access, I didn't even need to take the manual out of the box while putting the EOS M through its paces. It's really pretty intuitive. Now let me mention here that while I enjoy all the control the traditional pro shooting modes afford me, I really appreciate Canon's creative auto mode. A lot of people who have only been exposed to point and shoot cameras or maybe a phone camera are now making the switch to an enthusiast model because they want to take pictures that are either blurry in the background or maybe they have everything in focus. And unless they've taken a photography class to learn the techniques for depth of field control, they aren't sure what to do. Creative Auto automates everything about taking the shot, but it still gives a touchscreen slider so you can take control over that background blur and make everything blurry or sharp. It's just a great idea. Another benefit to having a camera with a touchscreen is easy focusing. You can simply tap the screen to tell the camera where you want to focus, and then if you turn on touch shutter, Tapping the screen focuses and snaps a shot without you having to even press the shutter button. It may not be how pros are used to shooting, but I bet it makes them smile when they start shooting like this. Of course, there are a few other features designed to appeal to consumers like creative filters. There's a grainy black and white, uh, soft focus, fisheye effect, just to name a few. Of course, you don't have to use these features, but they are great if you want to have some fun in camera and then upload your images straight to email or Facebook. I realize though that most people won't be buying a camera like this just for special effects alone. Beyond these post-processing effects, if you want an easy to use point and shoot camera with features that can help you grow as you master photography, but still offer simple controls until you're ready, this is a great camera. The sensor is an impressive 18 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. That's the same one that's inside the Canon Rebel T4i, so it's bigger and better quality than most point-and-shoots. The low-light performance is quite good, and the ISO goes up to 12,800 native or 25,600 when it's boosted, but I probably wouldn't go much above 6,400 myself. Keep in mind that this camera doesn't have a flash, so if you're in a low-light environment, you'll either have to use external flash or increase your ISO. Because Canon has introduced a new EFM mount type with this camera, there are only two native lenses so far for the EOS M, and they're both really quite good quality. The available sizes are an f2 22mm pancake, which makes the camera especially pocketable, and a nice f3.5 to 5.6 18-55mm image stabilized zoom. And because there's a 1.6x crop factor, the 22mm lens would be like having a 35mm lens on a full frame camera, and the 18 to 55 would be like if you had a 28 to 88mm lens. So it covers a good zoom range. 
The two EFM lenses both feature Canon's STM technology, which means that they integrate an ultra-quiet, smooth autofocusing motor. This kind of autofocus is crucial for high-quality video shooting. If you have other EF mount Canon lenses, there is an optional adapter available so that you can use those as well. So, what does all this mean for image quality? My experience was that I got great image quality and low noise in low light. As you would expect, the JPEG processing results in a smoother area where there was noise, and slightly boosted colors and final images were pleasing. Remember, this is the same image sensor as the T4i, and since the 18-55 lens is really good quality, you'll get images that are every bit as good as what the T4i captures. I felt like the images were both well balanced and accurate, and of course, if you have a particular preference for how you'd rather have your JPEGs processed, just change the picture style from the default auto to one that favors portraits or landscapes, or one that's neutral, or you can even create your own JPEG processing settings if you like. The LCD is just over a million dots, and it's great indoors at night or in the shade, but just like other cameras in this class, when it's really bright out, you may find yourself distracted by reflections and unable to see those little details while you're shooting. There's no optical or electronic viewfinder option, so you have to use the LCD. So just be ready to do a little guessing when you're shooting in direct sunshine. Now, normally with this kind of situation, I would attach some sort of lens shade to create a makeshift viewfinder, but because so many controls on the EOS M require the touchscreen access, it's not really that practical. So let's talk about the touchscreen. If you're used to using a smartphone, you'll really enjoy this touchscreen. It really seems like it's more responsive than most camera touchscreens I've ever used. Now, in case you didn't know, Canon has a top-of-the-line reputation when it comes to DSLR video. So not surprisingly, the video is very good quality, and the camera, as well as the 18-55 zoom, are built for a good video capture experience. The camera has a jack for an external mic, and it shoots 1080p HD video. The STM zoom motor that I talked about earlier is really nice because it focuses so quietly that even if you're using the onboard stereo microphones for your audio in a really quiet environment, you probably won't hear the motor at all. I didn't. And the IS is good enough to make handheld video without too much handshake at all. Additionally, Canon has integrated a new autofocus mode for use when recording video. Movie Servo AF. This mode provides continuous autofocusing while shooting video, as well as subject tracking to help ensure sharpness. So this is a great camera with great still and video capabilities, but there are always a few little things that you may or may not find a little bit annoying. In comparison to other cameras in this class, the EOS M isn't especially fast. Now I'm talking about startup and capturing focus. It's not bad, it's just not fast. The EOS M is a bit of a heavy camera and it feels like it's built sturdy. Now that's normally good, but the grips are a little less grippy than I prefer for something of this weight. So I made sure that I always use the camera strap. And speaking of the grip, my natural grip tendency blocked the focus assist illuminator light, so I had to be aware of that. The camera does have a hot shoe, so it's ready for any Canon or even off-brand speed light. Just be aware there's no built-in pop-up flash. Most mirrorless cameras are a great option for photography enthusiasts and even pros because of all the control and quality that they offer in a smaller package like this. The EOS M is a great camera that captures great stills and video. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this camera to a friend who's upgrading from a point and shoot, but who wants to keep things smaller than a big DSLR, or even a pro who wants the smaller size, versatility, and convenience with pro controls, a great lens, and pro quality. For Kelby Training and B&H, I'm Larry Becker, and as always, thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.